Samna. Wow. What's up, man? Cool, man. So recently, of course, um, you made the headlines uh -huh. for the wrong reasons. Uh -huh. You do realize the the severity of what happened. Of course. Yeah. The story is you had a, a, a day in court mm. and moments before you were supposed to appear, you called the courts mm. and said that there was an explosive device in the building. Right. Is that... Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much, much what happened yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I just, I just, I just I wasn't feeling like myself for a little while, actually. It was more than just just that day, but, you know, that's... Came to a head on that day. Yeah, you know, it was just, it was just so much things I was dealing with, and that situation just, the situation I was there for, rather, you know, just put it over the top, you know? Right. You know, I wasn't feeling like, I wasn't thinking, usually, I'm a type of person that likes to plan things out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if there's something that I wanted to do on purpose, I would have planned it out. Right. Yeah? <laughs> so that wasn't, it wasn't planned, it was just nah. sort of impulsive. Yeah, in a situation where it was just so much going on in my mind. I was like, I wasn't going to sleep for, for a long time. It was just so much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. To a person that's watching, obviously, I think we can all relate to the fact that at some point in life, our backs could be against the wall. We could feel like, the pressures of society are, you know, building up to a, to a point where we might make impulsive decisions. And sometimes in life, not that you get away with them, but they just play out differently. And in your case, the end result was, was definitely not positive. But to somebody else that's watching that might be going through those motions. Um, well, a lesson learned by your example? I mean, I can only say that I know that it didn't work out for me to do impulsive and something impulsive like that because I know I can do things do things better if I wanted to do anything, you know. Right. What I mean? After you after you did what you after you made that call, mm -hmm. did you realize at that moment maybe I went too far, maybe this is When I really realized that was when they actually made evacuated the court. And you were standing there? Yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? Right. I had to be there. You know? Right. It really came it really made like it really hit home. Hit yeah, it really became real when that when they said evacuate the court. Right. And that's when I was thinking, no, like I I you know, it was me that I called I had to and I couldn't just leave. I felt like I couldn't just leave. Right. If I had a family member that worked in that building mm -hmm. and that sort of threat was made against I would be very anxious, uneasy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you realize that yeah, I knew the that, people you know, that were directly or indirectly associated with this. Of course, of course. Everybody was affected. Everybody's affected by everything that one person does. You right. know what I mean? So, of course, everybody was affected on, on, on a large scale. So, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. I recognize that. You know, I still have to live with it just like everybody else had to live right. with it. I live with it on the other end of the stick. And you went. To Bascade. Yeah, I did, um, I did. I did one month yeah. to Bascade. That was more than enough time for me. To anyway. reflect. Yeah, I reflected the first couple of days. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, and then it's just there. It's your first time going. Yeah, my first time, my last time. Yeah. For sure, you know. Um, what was What was the experience of being there for one month? It was definitely an interesting experience, you know. Um, definitely, even grateful to some degree for even being able to see that aspect of Bermudian life that right. most people don't, would never get to see, not to say that they'd want to see it, but they'd never see so they'd never understand it or never even be able to, to, to speak for it, you know? So, yeah, it's, it was different, definitely interesting. And it's, it's, it's something you get used to, you know, you get used to different things and there, which is, which is like it's, that felt weird, almost getting used to things, you know? Right. That's, and getting I can, used to something that you probably shouldn't be getting used to. Exactly. Isn't that? And you can almost see on some on some guys like how that are repeat offenders. You can almost see how they're more used to being in jail than they are used to being outside of jail. Wow. One month was it the longest month of your life? Um. Or did it kind of go by quickly? At first it was. It took to long, it? but it started to go after two weeks. Right. It started to go by quicker. You right. know, because almost like you develop a routine. And you just go with it, like, right. you know what I mean? Now, prior to this incident, you had a video 
that was on I saw it on Facebook where I mean you're you're you wear many hats. Right. We see you in the boxing ring. Right. We also know that you're a comedian. Right. You're into music. Right. Um, but you had a video on Facebook in which you were selling different items. Right. And to anyone that was watching it that knew you mm. knows that you're a comedian. Right. Some people that might have watched it might have thought, you know, you were really in a space where you needed to sell those items. Right. Right. There is a thin line, though, when you think about comedians, uh -huh. where some of what they might be saying might come from a real place or even a dark place yeah, yeah. where they're expressing themselves through comedy, which right. is one of the things that you do. Right. Was that coming from a real place or even a dark place? Because the reason that you were going to court <laughs> was because you were in debt. Hey, you know, I'm set up and thought about this, her like stuff, like how funny everything is. I did it as a joke because like a couple of days before that there, I saw a post of this woman trying to sell these busted looking sneakers on right. um, a sale group. And I just thought that's funny. Like I'm always even said that there are people sell shit that just should be given away. So I end up right. trying to make a video of it. And um, um, I did it in one take without no script or nothing. You know, it was just like, take out these items. It was like freestyling. I, I used to be pretty good at freestyling. I, I, I thought anyway, but in stuff like that, sometimes you catch it on the moment and you just, you just run, you know, you're running it. And this was one of those moments when I caught it and it was, just, it just ran everything, every item ran perfectly with the next one. Right. And I was in the zen. Right. Somebody asked me in the, asked in the comments, I can't believe you did that one take. I said to my, like, I could did it without laughing rather. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, I could, like, that was the, that, I couldn't believe that I did it without, right. without laughing, you know? Yeah. So like, to me, like I'm, I'm always been, into performing arts, you know, acting, anything like that. That's pretty much just acting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That not pretty much. That was just acting. Right. You know, so yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't no, in no way tied to reality. I was selling them as a joke. And as far as being a comedian, yeah, a lot of comedians they come from a dark place, and and and, and it's not so much. It just it's different degrees of that darkness. You know what I mean? Just depending on what your life's been like, you know, and and how you can even make a joke out of things or be able to see um, humor in things. Uh, because you've had such a, a rough time in, in other places, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah, so, and, and as far as that is concerned, yeah, I have my moments of, of darkness just like anybody else would, right. you know? And to a, another person that's, that's watching that might not have an outlet, like, do you have a good support system, do you feel like? Like, friends that are, you know, because like I said, we all go through, through, through life, right? Yeah. And, and, and with that said, I'm not the type of person that, would even try to take myself to someone else. You know what I mean? Because I know that everybody's got their own problems. Right. You know what I mean? They so say like, men have a problem with that. Yeah, and, and it's true, and it's true. And, we and, we and, talk and, about a lot of deep stuff, actually, in barbershops and, and stuff not, and like not, that. Not just not, men, but people in general who have right. a problem with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Due to um, whatever went, went on in the, in the family, when they are growing up, or anything like that, you know? So people in general, but yeah, men do have a problem with that, they say. You know, but I, I think that we talk about things when we feel like it, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, a, that's an important part too, just about being comfortable enough to feel like it. Right. You know? So, next week, mm -hmm. you are going to be doing a campaign. Yeah, on Saturday. To try and give back. Yeah. And this is tied to your being experience. My, yeah, being a Babeskate, I read just about every book they had in the Remain Library. Right. You know? Um, so, and it's like sometimes books are so old, they're falling apart. You la lost your la last chapter. You can't even, you know, you can't even finish the book. Or mm -hmm. it's, it's missing the chapter in the middle. Or so just a bunch of pages or something is going, mm -hmm. you know. So it would be nice. And, and guys up there, they want to read, you know. It's not like guys can't read or, or don't or not interested in reading because they read the books too, but they end mm -hmm. up reading them over and over and over. So I'd like to be able to, you know, collect books from people. Um, people who are not, you know, they have books that they're not interested in anymore. They've read once or twice, and they're just they're just collecting dust. Bring them down, and we can donate them to to Westgate. They take right. them to a farm or wherever. So you guys could, you know, expand their imaginations. You know, just just because so many guys like yeah, they can read or whatever, but they have such limited access imagination and 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 access to material. Yeah, right. but they have limited imaginations. You know the because they haven't been into reading. Like, I've always loved reading, right. you know? And they haven't been into reading for, unless they had to in school, 
You know, so the anything that they think, anything that they think about, are the things that they experience. You know what I mean? The things that they experience around the neighborhoods. Yeah. So, what type of books do you think? I mean, all types of books. All types of books, because you know, they say you know they they'll, they'll say like a a good book finds you. You know, so just bring the books. Right. And let people go do them. They may read one by mistake. I read a book, um, and there made me you know think a lot. Of, about things, you know, it's a, it was called, and the guy had my same name, the guy, it was called The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Nope. But, um, yeah, it was this guy who was from, um, he was from New Jersey, and he went to Yale, you know, on, a, on, a, on a somewhat of a scholarship from a rich investor. It was mm -hmm. a true story. Right. You know, um, brilliant, brilliant guy. And um, he ended up just coming back to New Jersey and ended up selling me. He wasn't really applying himself to what he could have been doing because he right. was into, he had a, a degree in uh, molecular, molecular biology. Wow. You know, brilliant guy, you know. And um, yeah, it just made me think a lot, you know, about, uh, and he was also like a person that was emotionally to some degree challenged due to his family situation. Mm -hmm. his, his dad was in prison um, for murder he didn't commit. Right. He's in school, always trying to um, study the case and all that, so, you know. He could have been a, a great lawyer, mm -hmm. but he just just wasn't focused on what he had to do because he couldn't express himself even, right. you know. So, yeah, it was, it was a good read and made me have a lot of interest back. Um, yeah, and it's just stuff like that, you know. Just bring any books up there. You never what knew what somebody's gonna pick up and read, or even two guys like that are doing time, you know. Like write, you know, it might inspire them to write a story, right? You know. And how can they get you these books? Just reach People, out to I'm you. gonna be down at um, the um, Controversy Boxing Gym. That's on the corner of Cedar Avenue and Victoria Street. Okay. Just below the Queens Club. I'm gonna be out on the side of the street. I should have a table out there. Um, people just come by and bring your books and DVDs also, because man, you know, you get to watch DVDs when um, you're not locked locked on, and um, and even if you are, if your TV is, if your room is by the TV. Right. So, but um, nonetheless, sometimes guys watch the same DVD over and over and over. And people may think, oh, what guys are in jail, they're not need to be watching DVDs. What you else want, you want them to do, you know? Right. Guys are sitting up there doing nothing. Uh, they could be doing something, but that's another conversation that we'll have in another interview. Right. I guess. So, yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Oh, you know. sorry. Between the hours of 11 and 2 p.m. 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Saturday. Well, Robert, we appreciate you taking a couple of moments yeah, um, out to just share your experience um, yeah, like from, you from your perspective. Yeah, yeah, you definitely know, interesting. You can't just stop at the headline. You know, it, this, this happened to you. Yeah. Um, it's mean, something that you did. What's, what's sort of your final word to people that are watching um, I say, well, you know, about the whole incident? Um, any, anybody's capable of, of doing something silly, you know what I mean? Uh, something that without thinking, you know? Any one of us, depending on the degree, it could be anything, you mm -hmm. know? Enough people, they, they'll get in the car after a night of drinking and, and drive him, you know? Not, not, not thinking that you could probably kill somebody or yourself right. at night, you know? You know? Um, like I said before, maybe I'll tell you guys about the story about how I got in this debt one day and on a comedy show or whatever. Okay. But because it's a it's a funny story to some degree. <laughs> we look forward to that. Yeah. All right, Robert.